We welcome you to another Sunday School lesson. Sunday School is a blessing and gift from God. Jeremiah was a young priest of Anathoth in the tribe of Benjamin. He is often called the prophet of doom, because God declared that his ministry was to uproot, tear down, destroy and overthrow, to build, and to plant. Jeremiah is also called the weeping prophet, was extremely depressed at times because the people refused to hear his message. He tried to hold back from prophesying God's message, but he learned that the word of the Lord was like a burning fire in his bones, so he had no choice but to proclaim the harsh message of God's judgment. A good portion of the prophet's message would include predicting the fall of Judah and Jerusalem at the hands of the Babylonians. As such, he was falsely accused of siding with the Babylonians. He was beaten, petitioned to be put to death by the king's advisors, and kept in a muddy dungeon without adequate food and water. Our lesson begins when King Zedekiah summons Jeremiah and has a private talk with him. Our first verse says, Then King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah the prophet and had him brought to the third entrance to the temple of the Lord. I am going to ask you something, the king said to Jeremiah. Do not hide anything from me. King Zedekiah had Jeremiah released from prison and sent to him for a private talk. The prophet was brought through the king's private access to the temple. Zedekiah asked the prophet for a word of advice, and hopefully a word of comfort from the Lord. The king hoped Jeremiah would not keep the truth from him, whether it was good or bad. Earlier, on another occasion, Jeremiah told the king that Zedekiah would be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. This time, the king was hoping to get a more pleasing answer. Verse 15 says, Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, If I give you an answer, will you not kill me? Even if I did give you counsel, you would not listen to me. Jeremiah wanted to be sure that Zedekiah would deal with him fairly regardless of what his answer would be. The prophet, perhaps thinking about what happened to Uriah who prophesied against Jerusalem and was hunted down and killed by a former king Jehoiakim, wanted the king to be straight with him and admit that he wouldn't kill him if he told the king the truth. Then Jeremiah, knowing the king's character said, Even if I give you counsel, you won't listen to me. Jeremiah's words appear here to be hopeful that the king would be willing to hear and receive instructions. Verse 16 says, But King Zedekiah swore this oath secretly to Jeremiah, As surely as the Lord leaves, who has given us breath, I will neither kill you nor hand you over to those who want to kill you. In response to Jeremiah's fear for his safety and his life, Zedekiah promised on his word as the king, and confirms his promise with an oath that whatever the prophet would say to him would not result in his death. By swearing before the Lord, the king no doubt believed that if he dared to take the prophet's life unjustly, the Lord of life would also take his. Verse 17 says, Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, This is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, says, If you surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, your life will be spared and the city will not be burned down, you and your family will live. Jeremiah courageously began by giving Zedekiah some very good advice from the Lord, telling him that if he would go out and surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, not only would he live, but the city of Jerusalem would not be burned, and those in his household would also live. This was the same advice Jeremiah had given to the people on two other occasions. God's point was that everyone was to submit to his divine judgments, and not even think about opposing them. God had given Judah an opportunity to avoid complete destruction. Verse 18 says, But if you will not surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, this city will be given into the hands of the Babylonians and they will burn it down, you yourself will not escape from them. King Zedekiah could obey God and surrender to the king of Babylon, not only saving his life and the lives of the people, but Jerusalem would be spared from being burned to the ground. 
but if he chose to disobey God and hold out against the Babylonians and not surrender to the king's officers, Jerusalem would be burned and Zedekiah would be captured by the Babylonians. This was not the first time that the nation had been warned about the destruction arising from their sin, but they failed to listen. Verse 19 says, King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have gone over to the Babylonians, for the Babylonians may hand me over to them and they will mistreat me. Many Jews have already deserted and gone over to the Babylonians, and Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have gone over. This is interesting, the king was not as afraid of the enemy as he was of his own people who were now captives in Babylon. And he was afraid that the Babylonians would turn him over to his former Jewish servants who would humiliate and mistreat him. This gives us some insight into how evil King Zedekiah was. He had mistreated God's people and now he was afraid that they might mistreat him. Zedekiah was so caught up in his pride that he wasn't even worried about being killed by the Babylonians. Verse 20 says, They will not hand you over, Jeremiah replied. Obey the Lord by doing what I tell you. Then it will go well with you, and your life will be spared. After hearing what the king feared the most, Jeremiah said the Babylonians would not hand him over to his fellow Jews, which was what Zedekiah feared the most. But it was necessary for Zedekiah to obey the words of the Lord that Jeremiah was speaking to him. Obeying God would mean that everything would turn out well for the king and he would not die. But if the king disobeyed and refused to surrender, he would still live, but things would not be well with him. No matter what Zedekiah decided to do, God had already promised that he wouldn't die in battle, but he would die in peace, not violently. Again, we see God's mercy in the midst of his judgment. Verse 21 says, But if you refuse to surrender, this is what the Lord has revealed to me. The prophet made it very clear that if he refused to surrender, what he was about to say was what the Lord revealed to him. Verse 22 says, all the women left in the palace of the king of Judah will be brought out to the officials of the king of Babylon. Those women will say to you, they misled you and overcame you those trusted friends of yours. Your feet are sunk in the mud, your friends have deserted you. The king's refusal to surrender to the Babylonians would result with all the women in the king's household taken by the Babylonian officials who could do whatever they wanted to do to them and with them. If Zedekiah cared for the women he was surrounded by, he would obey God's word and surrender. If he didn't, Jeremiah said that these women would mock the king saying the king's prophets, who counseled him not to surrender, have deserted to the Babylonians to save their own lives and were better off than they would have been if they remained in Jerusalem with the king. Jeremiah said Zedekiah was stuck in the mud of trouble, and his friends had deserted him. It's true that what we seek to avoid by sinning, or refuse to do for fear of humiliation, will certainly meet much greater reproach because of disobedience. Our final verse says, All your wives and children will be brought out to the Babylonians. You yourself will not escape from their hands but will be captured by the king of Babylon, and this city will be burned down. Jeremiah continued to describe what will happen once the Babylonians finally invaded the city of Jerusalem. He said after entering Jerusalem they will bring out all the king's family and take them captive to the Babylon. Zedekiah would try to escape but he would be caught. The last part of this verse says the city of Jerusalem would be burned down with fire. Once Zedekiah was in the hands of the king of Babylon, they killed his sons right before his eyes. They also put out Zedekiah's eyes, bound him up with chains and carried him to Babylon, together with the remaining people in Jerusalem. But the poor people in Judah were left to farm the land. In addition, God kept his promise to Jeremiah that he would take care of him and was released from prison. In this lesson, we are reminded that Jeremiah was God's prophet who remained true to his calling in the face of prison and even death.
the Lord called him to prophesy the coming doom of the southern kingdom of Judah and the city of Jerusalem in particular. In spite of all the opposition, Jeremiah obeyed the Lord and told King Zedekiah what would happen to him and the nation if he failed to heed God's message. Likewise, we should not let anything prevent us from speaking truth to power even if that truth means doom for the hearer. 1. There is wisdom in seeking counsel from those who are obedient to God's will, Jeremiah 38 14-16. Even as God's people today, he will discipline us, but very often he will show his mercy by showing us his will. 2. Blessing comes with obedience and disaster comes with disobedience, Jeremiah 38 17-18, God often puts choices before us to test our wisdom and faith. Zedekiah was also given a choice of what blessings he should have received in light of the Babylonian invasion. 3. We often frighten ourselves from doing what we are called to do because of foolish, baseless, and groundless fears that we have made up in our own minds. When we share our fears with those who love the Lord, they can give needed encouragement, Jeremiah 38 20 4. When we are given godly counsel, it's best to heed it, Jeremiah 38 23 Undoubtedly, the king thought his fellow Jews would see his surrender as cowardice, but it would really be a sign of true courage. He would be bearing a lesser evil, being mocked by the Jews, in order to avoid a greater evil, the ruin of his family and kingdom. We are truly glad you spent time to learn this week's lesson with us. We hope you are blessed and may share these with somebody else. We wish you can join us at the Kubau Church of Christ soon. Our congregation is a place to discover faith, find new friends, grow closer relationship with Christ and serve with each other's gifts. Thank you very much, have a great week, and God bless you always, dear brothers and sisters.